Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this whole video, uh, we got, uh, well, we got Reese's Pieces, or, um, pieces of Reese's, and you know, we got one of those good old triangles. By that I mean we got a town in up nowhere, religious folk doing unreligious things, and just absolute eejits. The triad of small town cases. You know those, um, you thought this was a good idea? Really? Alabama bound, and without further ado, let's stop kicking the tires and give it a go. To the town of Morris, we go. Even the town name, uh, Morris. Uh. A little more than 2,000 people live there, a small town just north of Birmingham. Oh wait, not that one. Birmingham. And it's about as interesting as its website. Though, when you type it into Google Maps, uh, this picture comes up, which I enjoy. Honestly, it seems like a pleasant, sleepy little town. Not much happens, which is not always a bad thing. Things were not so quiet though on a night in February uh, 2015 in a house on the 600 block of Banks Street just across the road from the police station. Like literally. I mean, this is the house and this is the police station. Cops just had to, you know, poke the head out the window and, hey, what's the crack? Uh, and I guess this is downtown Morris. Yippee. A 911 call was made from that house. That was the house of Michael and Cindy Reese. Why did I call? Just shout. That night was the 18th of February, which is just when I'm posting this video. Shame. I, uh, I timed that one well. Uh, that's when a 911 call was made at about 8 p.m. Police department. Hey, um, I just got home and walked in the front door, and I don't know if the house has been broken into or what. The table's been knocked over. And okay. Look I, back I at this a little bit. Okay, who are you? Cindy. Uh, Henderson Reese. Cindy Reese? Uh huh. What happened was that Cindy Henderson Reese, wife of Michael, arrived home after going to the Piggly Wiggly. What the fuck? My mama taught me how to shop at Piggly Wiggly. It's a real store. Gee whiz! It's a supermarket chain. That's mad. Anyways, she returned home after picking up a few bits and bobs to a ransacked house. She couldn't find her husband. The police wandered over to have a goo and saw the saw the upturned gaff. And then, peeking down the hall, at the end of it, toward the back door, they saw someone slumped over. It was Michael Reese, 40 years old, and he had been shot to death. As I said, Cindy and Michael had been married for five years at this point. Michael was Cindy's second husband. Her first, her first had sadly killed himself three years before she married Michael, and that had devastated her. Cindy was Michael's second wife after a divorce, which too, uh, which too greatly affected him. As for work, Michael was in computer IT. He worked at a hospital in Birmingham, a position he'd had for the past two and a half years. Cindy, a senior accountant for the Jefferson County Commission. They didn't have children, but uh, but like, you know, a lot of folk down there, the church was a big part of their lives. They both were members of the Sardis Baptist Church in Big Hammy. Cindy, she was in fact the music director, right? We just had one of them, Diane Stoudy, remember her? She was mental. And I guess I just had enough. Michael had been shot once, back of the head, execution style, as they say. Things were turned over in the house, like it, it really did look like someone had been through, ransacked the place, like a burglary gone wrong. There was fast food on the table, relatively untouched, as if Michael, you know, he had just gone to get some grub, arrived home to, to find a cat suit wearing bad lad robbing his shit, and then they killed him. Couldn't have happened, you know, to a nicer guy. Everybody said about Michael, you know, he was, he was generous, he was funny, he was kind, he was gentle. It's, yeah, it's terrific. And Morris, a safe city, so killers on the run would be big news and big concern, because that that does not happen. 
there's nothing in Mars. So they spoke with Cindy a few hours uh, after the investigation began. They needed to know everything. First off, well, what, what do you, what do you know uh, about what's happened at the house as far as uh, the, you know, um, has anybody told you that Michael's gone? They, they, they may have been shot. But they, they pretty much just kept asking me you know, what happened when I got there. Um, yeah. And they told me he'd been shot. But, but I didn't know. That, I mean, they, they never did really see things. He's, um... I understand. It had been just a normal day. It was a Wednesday that day, so, you know, they both worked, and after work, Michael, he picked Cindy up, they went to her mother's house, then they went to church, then they went and got some fast food, and then they went home. But, just as they pulled into the house, Cindy was like, ah, oh, shit, forgot some. So she ran over to the Piggly Wiggly to pick up just a few groceries. She pulled out, Michael walked into the house, and then, and then, this. Short time later, she arrived home from the supermarket, and... Yeah. There was only two possible suspects, if this wasn't random. Right, one was a contractor, they were having some work done on the house. Um, and the other was Cindy's bit on the side. But when I was talking to you before, okay, and you were talking about... We were talking about Jeff. Your face would actually light up. It was a pretty open secret at that time that Cindy was off... Uh, how do I put this delicately? Riding! She was riding someone else. Everyone knew, despite Cindy's denials. You know, she never would admit it. And there were rumors of who the guy was. Well, guess who? It was none other than the pastor of the Sardis Baptist Church her and Michael went to. A Jeff Brown Tan Brown. They were both big, so they couldn't uh, exactly hide well in a car together. Even if onlookers wished uh, they had, because no one wants to see that, but people did. They said they would see them in the car getting it on numerous times despite her protestations that you know nothing was going on to anybody who mentioned it or anybody who even thunk it you know <laughs> it must be joking she would say that we went on walks you know her and jeff went on walks together all the time well they may not have been walking together but they were certainly doing cardio and so when michael ends up dead man it's a thinker she admitted the affair to the police. An emotional affair, though. Getting sticky? Come on now. Let me ask you, did it make it easier because you were uh, in love with Jeff to let your relationship with Michael be no, no. fall to the side? Or? No. She would say her marriage was on the rocks. Michael, you know, he was more interested in games than he was her. Sex is temporary, but games are eternal. But of course, would she cheat Jeff? Would she ever? Would she fall? And Jeff, you know, was a pastor. He was a God-fearing man, but he feared the devil even more. So why would he murder? She even left the church due to the rumors. Eventually, Jeff, too, also due to the rumors, which, let me remind you, were true. Well, Jeff was actually fired. Well, I mean, you know, you couldn't have a hypocritical person lecturing people on, you know, good values and maybe not committing adultery, but thankfully, you know, it's rare that it happens. There's very few hypocritical people in religion. I say sarcastically with great relish. How long have, have you known Cindy? Where did y'all meet? Um, I was the pastor candidate at uh, Sardis Baptist Church um, back in August of 2013. She was the... Um, worship uh, minister, worship leader. Was she with Michael at that point in time? Yes. Or was she already married? Yes. Then Cindy finally admitted that after they both left the church, it became, as the late uh, Olivia Newton-John would say, physical, physical, let's get into physical. Let me hear your body talk. 
let's get physical, comma, physical. But she was trying to make it work. She even told Michael about what was going on. And these 40 year olds even went to Disneyland for their anniversary to try and patch things up. We tried something designed for children to save our marriage and we're all out of ideas. They soon spoke with Jeff. Jeff had an alibi, however, for the time of Michael's death. He was over 50 miles away. Jeff had been a Marine at one stage, later a cop, then a pastor, followed by a barber, hairdresser, then a pest control guy. That's ironic. What an eclectic career. Wow. It'd be more impressive if he did all that in reverse though. He was a jack of all trades, though jackass of all trades might be more appropriate. But people said Jeff was around a lot, like to the point of watching the Reese house a lot. Stalker type shit. After Cindy and Jeff left their church, he followed the Reeses to their new one. And not only that, word was Jeff had a few honeys around town. Seems like Michael was aware of Jeff trying to steal his woman, and that Jeff might use violence to get his way. Were you trying to get him to leave her? No, uh, no I was trying to, we, we developed safe words uh, for her, um, uh, and uh, we tried to, we, I, I did talk to her like, listen dude, it's not worth it. Where would you, would you admit, or would you say that, that his uh, curiosity or his suspicions were warranted? I mean, that's, of course they were. Michael started to realize he had a target on his back, especially when word went around that Jeff had offered some dudes his car if they took care of Michael. Then they dug a little deeper. It was a burglary gone wrong, they initially thought, but nothing was stolen. Nothing major anyway, like some small pieces of jewelry, but you know, they had some valuables still left. It was kind of like, uh, let's mess up the house, but I still want to keep this shit, so like, just maybe throw the blanket around, pour some cornflakes on the floor, nothing serious. The door was not busted in. That 911 call. Table's been knocked over. Okay, let's back up just a little bit. Just from my husband. He was literally at the end of the hall. It's, she would have seen him. Seems like she wanted to ensure she wasn't the one who found him. And the contractor they had worked in was confirmed to be away at that time. And honestly, the excuse she had that she wasn't there, that she had to run to the store. He didn't have any more ham. I didn't know he had bologna. He must have bought that. Oh, I could, I bought the orange juice because I didn't know how much orange juice he had. Seemed weak. At best. Well, first of all, she just arrived home with fast food. So, you probably eat that first before you go. It'll just get cold. Come on now. Second of all, the things she said she ran to the supermarket for, uh, you know, just some, some milk and eggs and sandwich meat, that kind of shit. They had that shit in their fridge, though, so she, you know. They later went and searched Cindy's office and found she had a picture of her and her husband. Fine. And a picture just below that of her and her lover. Not so fine. They also found she had been uh, paying for an apartment for Jeff. A little love shack. The night of the murder, Jeff had texted Cindy, keep me posted. Like they were expecting something. Like maybe they were expecting something that would not be tolerable to the life of Michael Reese. They also found on phone records of Cindy that she had called Jeff that night with. She called him and just left the phone on so that Jeff could listen in to everything that happened that night, including maybe something a little like this. She even spoke to him before the operator picked up the 911 call. Police department. Cell phone records also indicated that Jeff was not, he was not 50 miles away, as he said. But he, he wasn't in the house either, but he was close to the house. He was probably in the vicinity of Mars, or at least his phone was, probably watching nearby. What the police suspect happened is that Michael and Cindy, they arrived home, you know, after picking up food that night. Um, then Michael, he went into the back of the house to let the dogs in. And while he was kneeling down, Cindy... Before you said you went out to go to the pig, you almost started crying. 
because you knew exactly you knew exactly when and what happened and it terrifies you it terrified you you, you know so again I'm, I am so I'm so sorry I am so sorry that this has happened but will you talk to me and let me tell me what happened okay I'm here to help you then she messed up the place a little and went to the Piggly Wiggly. And she came home and called 911. I can put you exactly where you were at that point in time. Because as she's walking up to the door, I'm going to be able to find out exactly where you are. So I'm not, my timeline is not going to be off. Now, whether or not she did it or that you did it, or that y'all helped each other, we're gonna figure that out, I promise you. I do think that one of the two killed you or her killed the guy. Shot him in cold blood, he didn't see it coming. Just shot him down like he was an animal. Shot him in the back of the head like he was a pig or something. I think you or her did it. You said what? I think you or Cindy did it. And I respectfully disagree. That's your right. It was less than a month after the death of Michael Reese that both Cindy and Jeff were pulled over and arrested. Both faced murder charges. They both pleaded not guilty to the charges. Jeff, in a deal with prosecutors, agreed to testify against Cindy, and he pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter. This was in August 2016. Under that agreement, 20 years and the slammer, bucko. Cindy's trial began in November 2016. Now, no one really knows who was the shooter. No one really knows exactly what happened that night, but it's believed that it was Cindy who killed her husband. But of course, her defense said it was Jeff. A, a Jeff, the defense said, who was obsessed with Cindy. He stalked her. He would not let her go. And when it looked like, you know, the Reese's marriage might be mending, you know, hey, Disneyland, uh, well, you know, he wasn't too keen on that. After all, she was paying for his apartment because he was in the middle of divorcing his wife. So she was his cash cow. Apparently, uh, accountants for the Jefferson County, you know, commission office pay very well. He was inside the home when the Reese's arrived, they said, and he blew Michael away. See, the angle of the bullet that killed Michael was in a downward trajectory. Cindy would have been too short. Not Jeff, though. Also, there was no evidence on Cindy, nor gunshot residue. Also, when arrested, both uh, Cindy and Michael were on a $100,000 bond. Cindy got herself out of jail, but she didn't pay for Jeff. He had to remain in jail till the trial, which wasn't particularly long. But, you know, Cindy's defense said, um, you know, he was just pissed off at Cindy for not bailing him out too, so he was happily, happily agreed to, you know, join the prosecution. On the other hand, Jeff, testifying for the prosecution, said that during their little escapades together, Cindy always talked about killing Michael. She wanted him gone. And she asked Jeff a couple of times to find a hitman for her. Then the shooting happened. Cindy roughed the place up, then met Jeff at a gas station, gave him the gun and some jewelry. Cell phone records, of course, though, disputed this. Jeff was, or his phone was, very near the home indeed. Ultimately, after 90 minutes deliberation, Cindy was found guilty. She was sentenced to 40 years in prison. Morris' mother headed to prison for decades for her husband's murder. Today, a judge sentenced Cindy Reese for her role in a fatal love triangle. Sitting in shackles this morning, Cindy Reese faced a judge awaiting her punishment. Two years ago, her husband Michael Reese was gunned down in the couple's Morris home. Last month, a jury convicted his wife Cindy in his death. Today, Reese received 40 years in prison. When her husband was murdered, she and former pastor Jeff Brown were having an affair. Prosecutors argued the murder was the casualty of a tragic love triangle. Reese is eligible for parole in 10 years. Her family pledges to fight against her freedom.
Once again, in this story, uh, we see what we always see. People are people are never driven to murder. People drive themselves to murder. Rather than divorcing, or because they're jealous, or because they're greedy, they just decide to take another human uh, life, which I, you know, for most people is pretty unthinkable. Especially when it's your husband, wife, child, parent, whatever. Someone who, you know, you kind of, you, you love for decades, and then you're like, eh, maybe not. Regardless of who killed Michael, there was absolutely no reason to. And either they could have gone off together, Cindy could have easily divorced Michael, or if Jeff really was stalking Cindy, he could have just had a wank and fucked off. I can't even put myself in their shoes because they're so friggin' beyond normal thought. You have to really be when you think, you know what, I'll just kill him. Seems like there's a lot of people like that though out there, because I still have quite a lot of stories to tell. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to do so and be here with this guy. Uh, here, go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next little video. Until then, please, as always, you know, take care of yourselves. Here's Olivia. Mike out.